G'day, I'm Shane, and I'd like to have a say about things going on in Oz. It seems that our Prime Minister, Rabbit the Hun Abbott, is motivated solely by the need to destroy Labor's foe leader, Bill Shortstuff, whilst pretending he's securing our borders as well as shirt-fronting death cults overseas. This seemingly punch-drunk ex-university pugilist seems to know nothing except how to start a fight. And if you think it's a good idea to have rabid sideline the judiciary and have someone with the intellect of ex-copper Dodo Dutton decide who or can't be an Australian, be afraid, Petals, be very afraid. The ruling rabble apparently poll quite strongly amongst the unaware on the issue of national security, so all Rabbit has to do is campaign hard on the promise of keeping Australia safe. So in constantly talking up terrorism, it really suits his political objective to make most Australians feel very, very unsafe. But given that Rabbit the Hun's record of not keeping promises is the only exemplary point of his rebels' administration, Feeling safe from this English liar's plans to create a sort of fourth right down under is a problem in itself. It's horrifying to think that all this was planned, well, the detail in the last five minutes, but it was from the coots with queer ideas, from a parallel universe, the IPA's handbook. And some two years ago, I wrote of this rebel's possible election and postulated that their following of the Coote's policy thought bubbles would result in the degrading of civil society. Well, the rebel's been elected and voila! Now we have to look on as we suffer a further diminution of the nation's humanitarian standing as Rabbit the Hun, who's open for business into people smuggling, which also brings us closer to a genuine and serious diplomatic confrontation with Indonesia, while the rest of the world sees us as being morally bereft. And it seems that our Prime Minister can't hear the, his Pope's encyclical on climate change for the noise of the wind turbines. Having discussed Joe Toyota Killer Eleventy Hockey's acute aesthetic revulsion of these symbols of the future with Sydney shock jock Alan Toilet Boy Jones, Rabbit decided in another dictatorial captain's call that we shall have a commissioner for wind farms. Now, this commissioner, probably as impartial as the Speaker of the House, Kerosene Pompadour Bishop, will likely only listen to the 12 or so people who complained of the imagined deleterious effects of these aesthetic monstrosities. And then, ignoring all 23 previous studies into this alternative energy source, will, one by one, close them down, thus keeping faith with the coal miners who funded so much of the Liberals' election. In an effort to distract the public from these first two droppings, Diseducation Minister Quissy, the wine and perfect prat of a prefect pine, has laid a third by indicating that the government believes it has a particular responsibility only for independent schools and no time for public schools. The wine implied that, in return to a medieval model of education, it was saved from having to soil our dainty fingers counting out the pittance public schools are allocated, and it would also give the state something to do in their spare time, for only the privilege should be funded by the taxpayer. Besides, as the poor don't drive cars, only have to get a good job to buy a house, and obviously don't need medical attention or pharmaceuticals, why waste money on educating them? Let them eat cake. What a pile of droppings, eh, petals? Yeah, possums.